Hello, my name is Liz Schlemer, and this is a video for IME 315, Financial Decision Making for Engineers at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. This video addresses the concept of break even. So when we look at the five topics that are covered in this class, break even analysis falls in the category of costs and products. So in the simplest term, break-even is a way of graphing volume versus costs. And if you remember in the previous video when we talked about types of costs, there's fixed costs that do not vary with, with sales volume. And then if we add to that variable costs, which are those that increase at a certain rate of slope, according to the sales volume, we come up with the total cost curve. And if you remember, we talked about this being uh, an equation for this line is y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope or the variable cost, change in cost with change in volume. And then b is the fixed cost or the intercept. Now in this video, I'm going to change these around a little bit and I'm going to it's going to be the same equation, but in this case I'm saying cost is equal to the variable cost per, per unit times the volume plus the fixed cost. So now this is variable cost and this is fixed cost. And so this is the, just the same equation, but I've, I've switched the variables around. And instead of putting costs, I'm going to change that to dollars and add a revenue function. A revenue function. So if we think about profit, we know that profit is equal to revenue minus costs. So when sales volume is above this intersect point, revenue is greater than costs. When it's below that, costs are greater than revenue. And that's what we call this break-even point, the volume at which we begin to make a profit. Below that, we have losses. So these are two equations, and, and we, we look at the point in which they cross. So the first equation that we had is cost is equal to variable cost times volume plus fixed cost. So that's that same equation that I showed you related to um, the cost graph. And then if we look at the revenue equation, it's revenue is equal to price times volume. And we're going to set those equal to each other and, and say that this at this point is the break-even. And we're going to solve for volume. And so if you just do use algebra, we can see that the break-even volume is equal to the fixed cost divided by price minus variable cost. So let's look at an example of this. If the variable cost is $10 per unit, so that would be raw material and touch labor, the fixed cost is $1,000. And in this case, we're, we don't really care what the units of fixed cost is, but they do have a particular unit. Often they're units dollars per year. Um, and, and so, or dollars per month, but somehow dollars per a time period. But in this case, the fixed cost is $1,000. And then the price, or the um, amount that we're selling the units for, is $23. So you can see our gross margin, if you remember that from when we talked about um, profits before in the income statement, would be $23 minus, minus $10 times the volume minus the $1,000. And so what we're trying to do is say, well, what volume is such that we have zero profit or there, the two equations, the two lines cross? Below that amount, we have a loss. Above that amount, we have a profit. So in this case, we just plug the numbers in and we see that at 77 units, that is where those lines cross. So if we sell more than 77 units, we're going to make a profit. If we sell less, we're going to have a loss. And that's the concept of break even. So when we look at this, we can actually look at um, at a break even price too. So if we just set the equation, set the top equation here where the revenue is equal to the total cost equation, and we actually solve for P, or the break-even price. So in this case, we have a known volume, and we solve for price. So in the previous one, we had a 
known price and we solve for volume, but here we're saying what is the break-even price? So we can do that too. We can even do a break-even fixed cost. So if we have known price, known volume, known variable costs, we can calculate a break-even fixed cost. So break-even can be used in a lot of different analysis techniques. One of the other ways that we use break-even um, is in a make versus buy decision. So if you remember, what, we're, what we do here is the, the equation that says total cost of the make, we contest that to total cost of purchase. So in, um, in many economic decisions, the question is, should we buy a component or should we make it? So these two, this break-even analysis gives us a way to answer that question. So we look at the total cost of, of making the product versus the total cost of purchasing it. Um, so if the total cost of making includes a fixed cost, say of buying a machine and then a per unit cost, so that's why this would have an intercept and then a lower slope, Versus purchasing it, it will just no. There's no upfront cost or no fixed cost. It's just a variable cost of purchasing it. Now, above this break-even value, the cost to make it is less than the cost to purchase it. So, in that case, we would say we should make it. But down below this break-even, the cost of purchase is the lowest cost alternative. So that's why we have a question about what's the break-even in a make versus buy equation. So the total cost of making it is the variable cost times the volume plus the fixed cost. Again, this is that same mx plus b equation. The cost of buying it is the, is the purchase per unit cost times the volume. So again, we do, um, this is the, the values that we're, we're going to be doing, using when we do this calculation. And we're going to set those two equations equal to each other because we want to know where they cross. And if you do that, you can see the break-even volume is equal to the fixed cost minus, divided by the purchase price minus the variable cost. So let's just again look at an example. Let's say the cost to make this is $1,000, $10,000 fixed cost, and then $5 per unit. But if we wanted to buy it, it would be $7 per unit. So we do an analysis and we see that actually we plug it into that equation and we see that the break-even volume is 5,000 units. You might want to verify that you have that same answer here. So that means that if we're going to be making or selling more than 500 units, then it's better to make the product. If we're going to be selling less than 5,000 units, it's going to be better to purchase the product. So that's a couple different ways of understanding this, this break-even analysis problem. And again, this is the five areas that we're covering in this, in this class. And this particular video had to do with the cost of products.